Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing the latest instalment, I guess, of my bookshelf tour. So, in my last one, we cut off just before Terry Pratchett, because I did, like, a separate video on my Discworld collection. So we're going to pick up from after Pratchett, finish off that shelf, and then I think there are seven more shelves to go at the time of... No, there are eight more shelves to go at the time of filming. But it's entirely possible... <laughs> that by the time I get to that eighth video, there will be another shelf of books. I don't know. Well, obviously now, any time I get any books before, you know, Pratchett alphabetically by surname, they just go onto my shelves and they don't feature in the bookshelf tours. But, uh, you know, I figure what I like about doing this is that by the time I finish doing this tour, I will have talked about every single book that I've ever read on my booktube channel in some way or another. So even the books that go onto my shelves that I've already done the, you know, the tour video of, so they like don't feature in the tour, they will at least feature in wrap ups and stuff like that. Okay, anyway, enough of that. Okay, so this video is going to be almost entirely Philip Pullman, but there are some others as well. So we'll start here with Bill Price, Tutankhamun, Egypt's most famous pharaoh. This is literally just a non-fiction book about Tutankhamun. I've always found, uh, like, ancient Egypt as a culture really fascinating, to the point at which, like, Dr. Zawi Awas, yeah, you my man, Dr. Zawi. Uh, <laughs> I've always wanted to go to Egypt, never got around to it. Me and my mum were going to go for her 50th, and then basically it was deemed too unsafe to travel there. So the bu holiday thing we had booked was cancelled. But uh, yeah, I just read this because I'm really into, into ancient Egypt. And for what it is, it's pretty good. I mean, yeah. I mean, good, good little introduction. Then we have An Inspector Calls by J.B. Priestley. So this, uh, we studied for my GCSEs at secondary school. And, uh, you know, at one point when I was about 17, 18, for some reason I sold all my old books. I think because I didn't get any pocket money or anything like that, so I kind of needed money. And so, a little later anyway, I decided to, like, rebuild my collection by going through and repurchasing all the books that I did have, but that I no longer do, you know? And this was one of them. And basically, there's a whole saga. I bought it online, and then it arrived, and it turned out to be just a study notes version without the actual play-in. Then I bought it online again. And uh, the order was cancelled because the book had been damaged by water in the in the uh, warehouse. Then I ordered it again and it just didn't arrive in the post. And then I ordered it again and finally it arrived. And I reread it because it had been quite a while. And yeah, a cracking play. I'd like to see this performed actually. Although I don't really remember any of what we studied about it. But having reread it, I mean, it's just a good play, you know. And speaking of J.B. Priestley, we have Sir Michael and Sir George. A Tale of Cosma and Discus and the New Elizabethans. All right. I don't really remember this too much. I think I picked this up after, um, I think someone like Hannah Tay talked about it on BookTube. And so, uh, and I was like, that sounds pretty good. I'm, I'm going to get that. So I did, and it was okay. Here we have Virus Outbreak by Ian Probert. So he's somebody I interviewed for my book blog, socialbookshelves.com. And he seemed like a nice enough guy. Uh, one of the things that stands out to me is that uh, he had uh, problems with his thyroid and my friend Dave has those as well. And they really like affect everything, you know? And for him in particular, they kind of basically sapped his, his energy and his concentration to the point for about 15 years, he just stopped writing because he was having such problems with it. Now, this one is from, I think it's published uh, 1997. And it hasn't aged too well, but it is okay. I'm going to read you the blurb. The cat's here. We'll just ignore him. Welcome to a world where there are no answers, where the truth is often hidden behind a cloak of deceit. This spine-tingling series will provide a unique insight into some of the most intriguing events of the century. Where are the answers to these mysteries? They are locked away in files that most people never get to see. Files marked classified. In 1980, a deadly virus was discovered in a research laboratory only three miles from Washington. With a gestation period of 10 days, this virus can turn people into little more than soup, and there's no known cure. This is the story of an immense secret operation, an operation that involved security forces at the highest level in an attempt to contain the virus. But could they? So, I mean, this is pretty much aimed at kids. I mean, it even has Joshua P P Pickett or Pikett from 5, but I think he meant Form 5. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I enjoyed it though, but again, I think it helped that I... You know, I've chatted to Ian as well, so, you know, it's always nice to read a book by someone you, you, you know. Here we have The Savage Hour by Elaine Proctor. This is published by Quercus. I'm going to read the blurb of this. Uh, this was very good, though. This was like a 4 or 4.5, although it's been a while since I read it, so I couldn't tell you why. Just that I really did enjoy it at the time. DeWilt, South Africa. Uma is a white doctor running her own farm in the rural backwaters. 
Over 80 years old, she has seen apartheid rise and fall, but treats everyone, man and woman, black and white, with the same fierce respect and hard-won wisdom, until the day she is found drowned in the dam on her own land. At first only her granddaughter suspects any possibility other than an accident, but as the shockwaves spread, the fractures follow, exposing family, police, and a whole community on the edge of a harsh world that needs only a push to fall into savagery. So yeah, very good. All right, and that brings us to Philip Pullman. So this is all Philip Pullman. Here we have Count Karlstein, or Car Karlstein, the novel by Philip Pullman. This is a beautiful edition as well. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this one. Does it have a fuller blurb? Well, the blurb on the back, which is all I think you need to know is, who would dare to go outdoors on All Souls' Eve knowing that the demon huntsman is on the prowl? And I guess it's kind of middle grady, but I mean, I read it as an adult in and enjoyed it. It's quite beautiful even without the, uh, without the dust jacket as well. And actually, that brings me nicely on to the next one, because speaking of beautiful, uh, this is one that uh, Bex, my girlfriend, saw in a charity shop, and she showed it to me, and because I think she was going to get it, and she saw how my like my eyes lit up, so she let me buy it instead. So this is Four Tales, illustrated by Peter Bailey. So this contains The Firework Maker's Daughter, which I'd actually read before this, uh, I Was a Rat, Clockwork, and The Scarecrow and His Servant. And I do have to say, I don't know if it's just nostalgia, but The Firework Maker's Daughter is my favourite of the, of the four. Uh, drawing on the rich tradition of fairy tales, this collection will amuse, engage, and delight readers. And the problem is, is like I don't really like fairy tales too much, which is a shame because at some point I need to get to his uh, his version of Grimm's fairy tales. But you know, it's Philip Pullman, so I'm eventually going to read everything that he's ever written. And you know, this is just a beautiful little edition. And here, here are like some of the illustrations, the, the like the frontispieces. pieces, and uh, yeah, it's just just very nice, a little etching kind of thing. All right, then we have, I guess, his newest, or one of his newest. This is The Book of Dust, Volume 1, La Belle Sauvage. I didn't really enjoy this, to be honest. I will link below. I think I did a review of it. Uh, or if not, it will be in one of my wrap-ups. I think it's just that, I guess, we've been waiting so long for it, and I just... The, my problem with this was that it had, like, the philosophical elements of the original His Dark Materials trilogy, and all that kind of stuff that makes you think but it didn't have the adventure elements to sit alongside it, apart from like a 50 page stretch towards the end, which wasn't enough to save it, you know? I think what was good about the original His Dark Materials trilogy was that they were adventures, but they were also, they were also adventures that made you think, you know? Rather than just books that make you think. All right, here we have a spin-off of Philip Pullman's uh, His Dark Materials stuff. This is Lyra's Oxford, a uh, beguiling new episode from the universe of His Dark Materials. And I don't know, see this is also another problem that I had with the Be La Belle Sauvage and he's got the second one in this new trilogy or whatever coming out soon and it's going to feature Lyra sort of 20 years on and I just think that the ending of the original trilogy was so good that we didn't need any sequels, you know and uh, yeah, this is two years after the conclusion of The Amber Spyglass I think the next one is at least after The Amber Spyglass, I think and I just... I kind of don't want to know. I kind of liked how it ended. I thought it was just the perfect ending, but hey-ho. Here we have Mossy Coat, a story to read or tell for just one pound by Philip Pullman. Once upon a time, there was a beautiful girl whose mother made her a magical mossy coat. And as you can see from the fact that it's like 64 pages and the prints are like this, I mean, you could probably read it from there. So uh, this took me like 15 minutes or something to read. And again, because it's a fairy tale, I wasn't super interested, but it's Pullman, so why not? Here we have Northern Lights by Philip Pullman, also published as The Golden Compass. This is what I say when people ask me what my favourite book of all time is. I also reread it last year, so I'll link below to my review. I've probably reread this now a dozen times, something like that, and I wouldn't rule out rereading it again. It's just fantastic, this whole trilogy is. Here we have Once Upon a Time in the North, uh, and this is like set in the world, uh, and it follows Lee Scoresby. So what we got here, uh, another mesmerizing episode from the universe of his dark materials, including the very first meeting of those two legends and friends, Lee Scoresby, the Texan balloonist, and Yorick Burnison, the armored bear. Set in the far frozen Arctic, Once Upon a Time in the North contains other teasingly authentic memorabilia and clues, together with a thrilling board game, Peril of the Pole complete with spinner, game board, and pieces, all beautifully illustrated and rendered by master engraver John Lawrence. And this is a beautiful book. If I hold it close enough, you can kind of see the detail on the actual fabric that's used to bind it. It's like really beautiful inside. Here at the back, this is where we have this little thing here, which has got, you know, the compass. Is that a map? Peril of the Pole. So this is like the game board.
I mean, it's just really cool. I've never actually played this game. But uh, maybe I will at some point. I don't know. But yeah, also, it's just a beautiful book. Really well written. And I like that this... Again, what I said with the other ones is that I don't... I don't want to know what happened after the Amber Spyglass because I thought the ending was so perfect. But this is like a prequel. So that kind of works okay for me. And even La Belle Sauvage kind of worked for me on the basis that it was a prequel, you know? Here we have the Amber Spyglass, book three in the His Dark Materials trilogy. I can't tell you too much about this because obviously it's the third book in a trilogy. But, you know, also good. Probably my least favourite book of the trilogy, though. Here we have The Good Man Jesus and the Scoundrel Christ. So I read this fairly recently, got this in a charity uh, shop. And this is basically, it says on the back, this is a story. And it's kind of like a retelling of Jesus and the Bible, you know, uh, except that Jesus is a twin. So there is The Good Man Jesus and the Scoundrel Christ, except I would argue that both of them are good men and both of them are scoundrels. But uh, if you're interested in like religion, I guess, definitely worth giving this a read. And I'll also link below actually to uh, Pullman did this really good interview where someone asked him whether he thought it was, you know, uh, well, basically it was on the subject of free speech around this book and his answer was fantastic. So I will, I will link to that and I, I suggest you uh, read it. Uh, sorry. And I suggest you watch that, especially if you're concerned about free speech and, you know, that sort of thing. Here we have the Ruby in the Smoke. So this is the first Sally Lockhart book, which is set in Victorian London. Also amazing, the characterization, uh, characterization in this is great. There was like a BBC adaptation of this as well, which had Billy Piper in it, which I actually also really enjoyed as well. But this whole series I thought was great. I think my, my girlfriend didn't enjoy it as much, but um, she's thinking about potentially rereading it because I think she read them out of order as well, which doesn't really work too well. But yeah, this one was probably one of the better ones in that series, and it's the first one as well, so a good one to start with. Here we have The Shadow in the North, and uh, this one is the one that I've only read once, and so I don't really remember it. But again, it's another one of the Sally Lockhart books. Not one of my favourites, as you can tell. I believe there's also a death in this one. There's a death in one of them, anyway, that kind of blew everyone's minds. Here's The Subtle Knife by Philip Pullman. This is the second book in the His Dark Materials trilogy. I'm actually currently listening to it on audiobook. Second book in the series, and for me, like, the first is the best, then the second, then the third. Here we have the tiger in the well with a god awful cover, Jesus Christ, and uh, yeah, this. So actually, I'll read you the blurb of this one. Uh, sued for a divorce when she's never been married by a man she's never heard of, Sally Lockhart's life is completely uprooted. There seems nothing she can do to prevent the loss of her money, her home, her financial consultancy business, and most desperately, her dear two-year-old daughter Harriet. She's a great hero or heroine, by the way, as well, and definitely, I think, like, quite kind of like a good feminist hero you know so uh yeah uh just she was a great character all in all but in this one in particular when she's like a single mum in victorian uh england it's just yeah really well done i thought then we have the tin princess and this is i believe the last book in the series it can't be the last book because there's a character in this who i thought was dead but um yeah we follow um like this eastern european kind of setting that in a country that doesn't really exist and we we follow Adelaide who's a character in the first book the ruby and the smoke but she's kind of grown up from being a kid to being like a young woman basically and she's a great character as well and just the setting of this as well was fantastic that's the thing that really kind of kind of sticks with me then we have Who Done It, chosen by Philip Pullman, and this is uh, meet the greatest sleuths of all time, from Sherlock Holmes to Sam Spade, in this showcase of 16 detective stories. So we have stories here by Arthur Conan Doyle, Dashiell Hammett, Agatha Christie, Eric Kastner, Dorothy L. Sayers, Raymond Smullyan, Damon Runyon, Michael Underwood, Isaac Asimov, Leslie Charteris, Ellery Queen, Raymond Smullyan, wait, he's in it twice, okay, Italo Calvino, Tony Fletcher, Andrew Vax, and Stephen Leacock. And just if you're into detective fiction. It's a good introduction. Although I don't know why Pullman did this. Because he, as far as I know, he's not written any detective fiction. But maybe I'm wrong on that. I don't know. And finally, or at least for this tour, or this installment of the tour. This is The Book of Unwritten Rules. Edited by Rufus Purdy. And uh, I guess I'll just read you the blurb of this. Um, they tie our lives together. The only way to learn them is by getting them wrong. But just because they're not written down doesn't mean you won't be judged by them. Welcome to the anthology of stories where hidden forces are at play. Welcome to the book of unwritten rules. Would you have known them? 
The authors met on the Curtis Brown creative novel writing course. This is their first short story anthology. For a short story anthology, this is pretty good. I was sent it, enjoyed it, gave it a pretty fa favourable review, even though I don't think I'd had heard of any of the authors before, and actually now I can't remember any of the stories. But um, yeah, I mean, it's you, you know what you're getting with a short story collection. You're going to like some, you're going to not like others. And overall, it's going to be a sort of a mixed bag. This one was towards the better end, you know? So yeah, there we have it for this installment of the Bookshelf Tour. I will be back soon with the next shelf. As always, don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books, and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.